and welcome to the Cranky Old Gamer. Uh, today, today I'm going to be challenging uh, one of the rules I set forth on this this, uh, this little show here. Um, <clears throat> I today we're going to be doing a review for a game called The Battle for Solaria. And I, I promised when I first started this channel that at least as far as indie games, like if it's a bigger game, whatever. You know, uh, no constraints. For smaller indie games, I will not give a bad review. So this is not a bad review. I want to make that very clear. This, I did like this game. It's a very problematic game. Um, well, let's get started. First off, um, the game is, as I said, Battle for Solaria. And one of the things that immediately attracted me to this game is the artwork. Um, you can see here, uh, the artwork is gorgeous. It's just it, a whole series of different artists. Um, the artists are credited on each card. I love this. I love the art. It is gorgeous. Uh, and part of the other thing that I really attracted me is that it's got a really good story. Uh, the two main factions in the game, the Jotun and the Scythians, uh, the Jotun are kind of a, an advanced, like, kind of a Norse race, but like super high tech. And they've been colonizing this planet that has this rich ore called Solarium. And the planet is, of course, called Solaria. And so they created this race of synthetic slaves called the Scythians. Well, whatever, what happens in a sci-fi movie when you create a robotic race of slaves? They revolt. Uh, so the Scythians are basically standing up going, no, screw you. We have sentience, we have AI, we are intelligent, we have rights, and we're going to fight back and we're going to wreck your stuff. And the Jotun are like, we're your lords and masters, how dare you? Um, and, and so you're kind of fighting the two. And of course, throughout, there are also, uh, if you per purchase the expansion pack, which I also have, Blood, Profit, and Glory, uh, it, it comes with a secondary faction of mercenaries, which can go either way. Um, so that there's a lot of good to this game. There is uh, gameplay wise, it's very solid. There a lot of thought was put into this game, and I will definitely say that. Um, the I don't want to compare it to another game, but let's be honest, it's it's Magic the Gathering. It it's all it is. Uh, not all it is. Um, it's it, it's got its own features. There's a whole different uh, kind of scheme to the layout. Uh, for example, your what in Magic would be considered um, lands, in this, you first start off with a lower bar of influence, which are just cards face down. And for each one, and you can play them later if they are cards you want, but you place them face down and they are your influence pool, and they are how much you can build sites. Influence is your first resource. Your second resource are your sites. Uh, sites have a health, and they have you know, an attack, but they don't do anything other than generate solarium for you. And a few of them do have effects. Um, some of them, you know, plus one to all of your combatants, plus, you know, minus two to your defense, whatever. Um, they're all different, but mostly what they do is they generate solarium for you to uh, use the rest of your cards, to summon your combatants. Um, your goal when you're facing your opponent, but your goal is to attack their sights until all of their sights are gone, then all of your damage goes to the player. Um, to make this even harder, there are two rows. There's the front row and the back row, and you cannot jump unless your character has flight. You go, you hit the first row, then you hit the back row, and then once that's cleared out, then you can attack your opponent uh, for direct damage. There are, there are other cards. Uh, there are what are called tactics and conditions. But all it really boils down to tactics and conditions are your interrupts. They're your enchantments. Uh, tactics are a one-time deal. Um, it's it's a, an interrupt. And conditions are your enchantments. They are, you play them, they are permanently affect unless your opponent can counter them. Uh, combatants are your creatures. Uh, and some of your, the cool thing is some of your combatants can even uh, like like generate their own solarium so that adds even more to your pool uh and eventually you know you can you have all of your combatants attack your opponent's sites until all of their sites are wiped out and then you attack them directly and 
it's pretty simple. It's, it's really not that difficult a game to understand. This is where I have a big problem. Um, I've actually spoken with the creator of the game. He's a very, very nice guy, uh, very enthusiastic about this project. Uh, this, is, this is his baby, and I, I wholeheartedly support him. Uh, very successful Kickstarter, awesome. Uh, their website is huge. There's all kinds of expansions, uh, planned expansions. Right now, they're, all we have is the main game, the main game and the, the one expansion, Blood, Profit, and Glory. Uh, Blood, Profit, and Glory Prime. I mean, it adds a little bit of uh, Jotun and Cynthia and stuff, but it's mostly uh, add the mercenaries. <clears throat> so, what is my problem? Um, like I said, I've spoken to the creator, and I don't know what he does for a living outside of game design. I'm going to take a guess of one of two things. Either this man is a programmer, or he's an engineer. There is a race of being that are an unspoken savior to our world. They affect your life every day and you don't even know they exist usually. This race of beings are known as tech writers. What does a tech writer do, you ask? Probably didn't ask, but I'm gonna answer it anyway. A tech writer takes incomprehensible technical uh, jargon and condenses it into something the average layman can read. That is not how this instruction book is written. Okay, first off, the game comes with this little tiny pamphlet. Um, okay, first, I'm just gonna show you, this is a, a, every game has a quick reference chart, right? Quick, you just go, oh, this is how the turn goes, cool. I'm going to show you the quick reference chart for this. Boom. Does that make a lick of sense? No. Turn sequence, reset phase, draw. Is there anything quick and easy and simple about this? And then between everything, command window, sight phase, solarium phase, combatant phase, attack phase, declare attackers, command window, declare defenders, command window, keyword value step, command window, alpha strike, damage. Oh my God, stop. It's not that difficult. It, it's really, you, do, you don't have to spell out and that, okay. You wanna hear the fun part? This, I have this little book here. This book is 14 pages, does not make a lick of sense. And I told him this, I've told, I was like, look, I tried to get this game to the table and we could not figure it out. We could not play the game because the rules just, I mean, there's some basic stuff. So, so the, the creator of the game, um, Jesse Bergman. Again, Jesse's a very nice guy and he's very passionate. He wants this game to take off and I, awesome. So he said, okay, Cranky, um, I'm gonna send you the comprehensive rules book. Great, comprehensive rules, cool. Uh, this is actually available on their site. You can download it for free uh, as a PDF. Um, I have it on my tablet. Uh, I, I, I do this for all of my games. Uh, I always have the regular rule book and then I keep a list. Uh, let's see if it's, yeah, it won't show on my, you can kind of see it. I have all of the rule books for my games on my tablet so that we can have multiple copies. Okay, so Battle for Solaria, comprehensive rules. Do you see how long this is? I'm just getting started. This rule book is 90 pages long. 90 pages. Look, you can see the indicator. I've gone all this way. I'm just now reaching halfway. 90 pages. 90. It took us hours because here's the thing it's <laughs> it's it's very detailed it's very clear um but there is so much information here it is almost impossible to find the rule you need um 
It took us hours to figure out how to play this very simple game. Like I said, if you've played, it, it, this is not Magic the Gathering, but if you've played Magic the Gathering, you will feel right at home in this game. Um, you have influence, you have sights, you have tactics, you have conditions, you have combatants. That's all you need. Um, okay, so looking at this rule sheet again here, I'll, I'll put it up in the corner. Um, reset phase, draw. Um, okay, no, I'm sorry. Reset phase is when you return your activated cards to the vertical position. Untap. Draw phase. Draw two cards. All right, I like drawing two cards. That's cool. Influence phase when you play. It's the magic equivalent of playing one land. That's it. That's it. Command window. F*** the command window. F*** it. Just the command window. Get rid of that. <sighs> Sorry for the language. All the command window is is an interrupt. That's it. That's, hey, I'm playing this card. Are you going to do anything? No? Cool. All right. Yes, you are. You're going to interrupt with this card? All right. Next phase. Sight phase. You play your sights. That's it. Solarium phase. You look at your sights and add up how much solarium you have in your pool. That's it, that's all there is. You don't have to spell everything out. Combatant phase. You deploy your combatants, that, that, that's it. Combat, very simple. We've, we've all played a card game, right? You have your attacker, you declare, I'm attacking this target. Are you defending? Yes, no, okay, cool. Resolve damage, that's it. That's all there is to it. There's nothing complicated. Bear with me. I'm going to read this description to you. Attack phase. During the attack phase, the player whose turn it is selects any number of their combatants for an attack. They target any number of sites defending opponents control. If the depending, defending opponents do not control at least one site, they may be targeted for attacks directly. At least one target has to target a site for it to be a legal attack. Players may not attack a site without a combatant to target the site for the attack. All attacks must be declared simultaneously, and after attackers have been declared, the attacking player may not add any more combatants to the attack. Steps of the attack phase. Start of attack step. Resolve required triggered modifiers. Attacker, de attacker declaration step. The player whose turn it is selects any number of their combatants to attack any number of targets. Oh my god. Tech writer. Tech writer. This doesn't need to be so complicated. But, I'm getting out my anger here. I'm not, it's not anger, it's frustration, because this is a good game. I really enjoyed playing this game once I got past the instructions. Now, we, we did have a few minor quibbles with the game, um, and it's not the game's fault. The game is not finished. Um, it's purchasable in, one, in its current state, but it, it's, there, it's not done yet. Um, as of right now, there are two factions. There's the Jotun and the Scythians. That's not enough. There's also the, the mercenaries, but there's only a couple mercenary cards. And all you do with the mercenaries is you can play mercenaries on either interchangeable because you can't play Scythian cards with, you know, you can't mix and match in your deck. However, if you look at their website, you will see that there's going to be a grand total of five factions. And, and I think once that comes out, that's going to be great because imagine playing other games I've mentioned repeatedly in this whole uh, video. Imagine playing that with only two colors, but you can't mix and match colors. It's really limiting. But the game, the rules are solid. Like I said, the artwork is gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> the way you create a deck is very specific. You're not gonna like, if you ever enter, if they ever started tournaments, which they're trying to, they actually have a really cool ambassador program where they will hire you with you know, copies of the game to go to your local gaming store and start tournaments. Awesome. I like this idea. I, I think that's cool. Um, <clears throat> but imagine not being able to mix and match your cards. You know, I, when I played other games, you know, I always played, what did I play? I haven't played in a long time. Uh, usually I think I played green, blue. I, I don't know. I always played two colors. You can't do that here. And there's just not enough cards to uh, 
to really have a lot. I mean, there's, there's a lot of cards, don't get me wrong, but not enough to really add a lot of variety yet. But they have a lot of expansions planned, which is great. There, there is going to be content for this game, and please keep that in mind. Um, but right now, I believe there's 90 cards per faction in the main deck and 56 in this. So not too much. Um, when you create a deck, have you ever gone to a tournament or seen tournaments where somebody shows up with a giant deck? And I know some tournament rules don't allow that. There are very specific deck rules in this. Uh, you can have up to 90 cards. You have to have a minimum of 60. And all of the cards have a point total. And the point total has to add up to 100, which kind of reminds me a lot of X-Wing. Um, but there, you know, there's a lot of games up there that have a point total where you have to add up. That's just the first thing that comes to mind. In the future... I think there will be a lot of really cool things, especially if the future uh, factions that have not been released, apart from the mercenaries, if they're able to interwork with the other uh, factions. I, I can definitely see never being able to mix Jotun and Synthian because they're the ones at war. But I could see using the other three, the mercenaries, the, I think the uh, Proteans and whatever the fifth one is. I, it's, I've got the picture up here. Um, I can see them being allies and working together. That'd be great. All right, cool. Uh, being able to mix and match would be a huge deal. As I said, the basic gameplay is not very difficult. Um, I'll just lay it out real quick. Uh, you have here a game mat. You don't have to buy the game mats. You can just lay it out on the table like we did. Um, you start off by placing influence cards, which are any card from your hand uh, face, face down. From there, once you have enough influence, then you start putting out your sights. And your sights, again, they have a defense, they have a, a offense. Uh, the offense, they do not, you can't attack with them, but when you have a defender, when you have an attacker coming at you and you're defending as your sight, your sight can do damage back to it, which is cool. Um, once you've generated enough solarium, you place out your combatants, and there are certain, certain combatants that have different abilities. One of them is hidden. If something is over in the hidden area, then they currently, they cannot be targeted by anything because you can't see them. So um, one of the issues that we did kind of run into is you can mix and match cards, but the way the two armies are made, there's not a lot of strategy, like alternating strategies. Your Synthians are very sneaky and they're about pumping stuff out, whereas the Jotun are very brute strength and they all fly. Not all, but almost all of them fly. So... That's, that's really, you have to play accordingly. Uh, but I know that once they come out with more expansions and more cards, you're gonna have a lot more options. So once you've got your combatants, you've got your sights, you've got your influence, you're generating solarium, that's when you start, you know, you can use your combatants, you can attack your opponent's sights. As I said before, once you take out all of their sights, then you can target the person, uh, your opponent directly. And that's where a lot of your strategy comes in. There's different modifiers, and I, I'm sure Jesse is cringing every time I compare this game to Magic the Gathering, but I don't... It, I have to. Like, there's... Oh, uh, let me see here. Flight. What is flight? Flight is... It, it's, it, it's in Magic the Gathering. You can fly over your enemies. Only things that can defend against flight are things that have flight themselves. Cool. Uh, alpha Strike. It's First Strike. If you have a 2-2 creature and a 2-2 creature, normally they would cancel each other out and die. Unless this one has Alpha Strike, which is totally not First Strike. It does its damage first, kills this one, no damage done. Okay. Uh, we've got Hidden, cannot be targeted. Barrage is uh, indicates the number of adjacent sites. That's a, a, an effect on sites. Um, focus. Focus is if you're an attacker, you get plus X. If you're uh, to your strength, if you're a defender, you get plus X to your defense. Harvest. Once during the round, a character with Harvest may target a combatant in that player's damage pile. There's also a damage pile and a destroy pile. You don't need to separate damage pile and just damage piles for when I kill a character. Destroy pile is when a card actually says remove this card from the game. That's 
You don't need separate piles for that. You can uh, target a combatant in your damage pile, which is your discard pile, and you'd gain solarium for them. Okay, cool, you're harvesting the dead. Yeah, I like that. Um, but yeah, it's a good game. It is, I, I, we really enjoyed our time with it. I definitely see us playing this again. Getting through those rules and those explanations was such a hurdle. They need to hire a tech writer so badly. Just somebody to condense that 90 page document into something concise that makes sense. That a player can just pick up and go, okay, I get it. I know how to play this now. This ain't gonna do it. This ain't gonna do it. This is too short. This is too long. Find a happy medium. All right, so ultimately, as I've said, my, my overall opinion on this is yes, Battle for Solaria is a good game. Uh, it is not finished though. There is so much untapped potential, but there's plans for it. That's, that's all I can really tell you. It is going to be a good game. It's currently an okay game, but it's going to be a good game. This is one of those games that I'm actually going to do a how to play. So again, my recommendation, yes, check this game out. It is fun. It's going to get even better. Um, there's going to be other, there's going to be more expansions and I, I can see this developing a tournament following. Uh, I highly recommend you look into their ambassador program and take it to f your friendly local game store and demo the game. Teach them how to play other than the rules. <sighs> all right, so on that note, as I vented all of my frustrations with this, this I, I only get, if a game sucks, I'll just like, this game sucks, I'm not gonna play it. But it doesn't. It, that's why I'm so frustrated. I get so frustrated when something has so much potential and it's marred by something like that's easily fixable. So yes, please purchase the game. Uh, please check it out. I cite down below in the description, I have the link to their website, pick up a copy. If you're in my area, if you're in Orlando, let me know, I'll play a game with you. That'd be great. Um, so for now, Guys, if you enjoy my videos, you want to see me play more games, you want to see me review more games, please check out my Patreon. The link is down below. Uh, even a couple dollars a month would be a huge benefit for me and my channel. Uh, allow me to get better equipment, buy more games to review, support the arts. Uh, also, check out my Instagram. It is the cranky old gamer. I show pictures of gameplay, of components, of anything board game related that I can think of. And yeah. Check out my Facebook, facebook.com slash the cranky old gamer. And this has been Battle for Solaria. Thanks for watching, guys.